for this video, I want to look at telecommunications media. Specifically, I want to take a look at the wiring. Before we get in there, quick little trip down Geek Road. The reason why we're taking a very quick trip down Geek Road is to help understand how this all kind of relates to each other. If you were to take a more advanced networking class or any kind of networking class, doesn't have to be advanced, could be basic, you are going to learn about something called the OSI. The OSI stands for Open System Interconnect Reference Model. It is a model that helps to keep track of what goes where as far as networking goes. So for example, in previous videos, we talked about the hubs, the switches, and the routers, hubs being dumb devices, routers being smart devices. These fall on different levels of the OSI model. The OSI model is a seven-layered model, and the question that you're probably asking right now, which would be a good question, is if it's for networking, why are we talking about it here? The reason why I want to talk about it here is because it helps explain pretty much telecommunications media. Layer one is the physical layer. It means that this layer, everything on this layer, deals with electrical signals and it deals with getting information physically from one spot to another spot. So when we start taking a look at media, when we start taking a look at the cabling, when we start taking a look at wireless, we are looking at physically getting information from one point to another point. And everything that's responsible for that is in the same general family, at least it's in the same layer. When we're taking a look at telecommunications media, we have four things we need to be aware of. We have coaxial cable, basically television cable. We have twisted pair cabling, which is very popular in networks. We have fiber optics cable, which is your light information. And I'll explain all of this in more detail. Then we have our wireless, which is information sent without wires. Let's begin by taking a look at one of the oldest ways we can send information. That would be coaxial cable. If you have a television and you have cable or you have satellite, you have most likely attached to the back of your television a coax cable. This is really, really old. It's composed of a central conductive core surrounded by support structures. That central core is most likely or usually a copper cable. This is what sends information from one spot to another spot. The supportive structures are there to prevent signal loss. When you're moving electricity along copper cable, you can lose information. Over time, information deteriorates. You can have other information get in there. You cause noise, signal loss, all this stuff. And so everything surrounding that central core is there to help make sure that signal stays true to what was sent. Twisted pair, unshielded twisted pair or shielded twisted pair, or UTP, is your most common method right now in networks. This is what you're going to find most likely plugged into the back of your computer at work, is your twisted pair. And the reason why it's called twisted pair is because inside the sheath, inside the plastic coating, you find copper wires and they're twisted around each other. That twisting is there to prevent signal loss, just like in the coax, you had all the surrounding structures. We have two basic families of twisted pair, and I said it a second ago, you have shielded and unshielded. Shielded is more expensive, and you have an additional metal wrapping around the cabling. Unshielded twisted pair doesn't have that extra metal wrapping, and it's also much cheaper, so guess which one is used most frequently in networking environments. Even in the unshielded twisted pair, even within a cabling, you have another way to break it down, which would be your categories. You might have heard of CAT5 or CAT6. Your categories is how fast information can be sent. The higher frequency that you can send, it's measured in megahertz. So for example, in the early days of computer networking, you had, let's say, CAT3. CAT3 couldn't handle high-speed connections. They handled pretty good speed, but really not really high, high speed. So if you were putting a building together today, you're going to find you're at CAT5 or CAT6 or better in order to handle massive amounts of data. Finally, we have fiber optics, and we're going to cover wireless in the next video. Fiber optics is different, fundamentally different, 
than your twisted pair as well as your coax. It's fundamentally different because the type of signal is completely different. In your twisted pair, in your coax, the signal is electricity. In fiber optics, the signal is light, which is kind of cool. So you have fiber optics which transmits light from point A to point B. It can go extremely long distances. If you are from an older generation, you might remember making long distance phone calls where you'd and you'd make the phone call, you know, oh, hi, Grandma, and you'd hear static on the line, you'd hear noise. Then, I think it was MCI had the, tele the commercial for the pin drop, you could hear a pin drop. It's because they switched to fiber optics. And so if you make a long-distance phone call now, if you're not using your computer to Skype, if you're using a long-distance phone carrier, you're going to notice crystal clear quality because your voice is not being sent as electrical pulses. Your voice is being sent as light, which is kind of cool. It is incredibly powerful as far as being able to send lots of information. It has a huge amount of bandwidth, which means lots of information can go out there. It typically makes up the backbone of networks. The backbone of networks is kind of like the highway that all the feeder roads feed into. So, for example, where I live, we have a, a backbone of a network cable, probably fiber optics coming down to the neighborhoods. And off that, we have our coaxial cable to the house. Your backbone should be incredibly powerful as far as being able to handle large quantities of information, large quantities of data. The other cool thing about fiber optics is it's hard to tap. So if you're in an environment that security is a must, so for example, you work for the government or you work for a corporation, you don't want people just tapping into your copper cables, which is fairly easy to do. You want to have some level of protection. Fiber optics is very, very hard to tap. Because it's a kind of a glass core, you tap into a glass core, you, you can break it. Copper, not so much. You tap it, you're good to go. So in an environment where security is a must, you don't want people tapping into your computers and downloading information. So fiber optics is a must in a high security uh, place. Okay, in the next video, we're going to take a look at wireless, which is going to be so, super cool because of all the topics we're going to talk about in this series of videos, this is one that you're using right now at home and for personal use. So our next video is wireless.